Hey everyone, and welcome back to another video. Today I'm gonna to show you how to paint a lighthouse on a rocky beach, so let's do it. Okay, so to start, I'm just gonna go through my materials. I have my B watercolor paper today, my Winsor & Newton Cotman watercolors and my palette, my Princeton snap brushes in a size six and a size 12, I also have a pencil and an eraser, and I also have this Micron pen that I'm going to be using um, in the size 01, my water and my paper towel, and we are ready to go. Okay, so I've been asked many times to paint a lighthouse, and today I'm actually gonna do that. So um, I was looking up lots of pictures, and I was like, uh, wait, I've been to a lighthouse in a beautiful place in Ontario called Tobermory. A friend of mine has a cottage up there and we've been to the lighthouse many times just walking along the rocky beach so i thought i would paint that lighthouse because it means something to me and if you've ever been to tobermory it is an absolutely gorgeous gorgeous place in ontario the water in georgian bay is so like crystal clear and blue and almost like this turquoisey color it's stunning so that's what we're doing today okay so Start, I'm just going to sketch out the lighthouse. Um, I'm not going to make this too realistic or anything. I'm just going to kind of have fun with it. And then I'm going to go over the lighthouse in an ink drawing. So first, I just want to kind of lay out where my rocky beach is going to be. So I'm going to go just in a rough idea, just so I know where to put my lighthouse. Okay. And then I'm going to put the lighthouse here. So I'm going to just freehand it. one side of the lighthouse and then I'm going to do another side and you can always trace one if you really want to like there's no shame in that you don't have to do a specific lighthouse at all either whatever speaks to you do it I just want to kind of get the shape of this lighthouse. Mm, I think I want it to be a bit taller. Okay. Like that. And then this lighthouse has windows on it. So it's really great to work with um, a reference photo. I would have used one of the photos that I've taken at the lighthouse, but they were never good quality. And it was usually just of like me and my friends. So I found some pictures on Pinterest of the lighthouse that I have used to look at just to get all the dimensions and everything a little more accurate than you would think. Okay, and then there's the door over here, the roof of that door. Okay, like that. And then it has like another level up here. Kind of like a landing. And I'm just doing a rough sketch because I can go over in detail with my pen. So, and the top there. Okay, so now I am going to go over the parts that I wanna keep in pen. And again, I'm just gonna freehand it. I'm not even gonna use a ruler.
Okay, so there is our lighthouse. Um, and now I am just going to start painting. I don't want to have the rest of it in ink. I just want the lighthouse in ink. And that's just a preference of mine. You can totally outline the rocks or trees or whatever you like, but I just kind of want that to be the focal point and the only thing that is in um, ink. So now I'm just gonna erase the lines behind. Oh, and by the way, obviously, I taped this down with painter's tape because we're going to be wetting up a lot of the paper and I didn't want the paper to warp while I'm working on it. Okay, so there is our lighthouse. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is the sky. So I'm just going to take my cobalt blue here and lots of water, and I'm just going to make the horizon line. And then I'm just gonna do a wash all over it. I'm gonna leave some space for some clouds, just very rough. This again, isn't a realistic sky. Um, and I'm also using B watercolor paper because it does dry faster. Um, it actually starts to dry um, faster in certain areas, which then gives a certain texture to it. And I kind of like that. So if we were using something like arches, you would get a nice even blend for the sky. And this, I kind of want a bit more texture, if that makes sense. So you'll see once it dries, it's not gonna dry evenly all the way across and it just gives a cool effect. So I'm just slopping that water and the paint everywhere I need it. Okay. As you see, it's already started to dry here and you get some hard lines and I'm just gonna put some water over that, add some darker color to areas. I'm not going too crazy with the sky. Like that, okay? All right. Okay, so there is our sky. And before I move on to the water, I want that to dry. So I'm gonna work on the rocks next. So I'm going to take my burnt umber color and I'm just going to roughly kind of do a first layer of where these rocks are going to be. And I'm going to leave this area nice and white because I'm going to be doing some um, trees thereafter. Sorry, I'm trying to collect my thoughts. All right, so there's some brown. And it's already starting to dry and you just want these rocks anyway like just you want them to look like rocks so just start plopping in color <laughs> nothing specific no specific pattern i'm just kind of dropping in that color letting areas dry letting colors bleed just not really thinking too much about it i'm gonna grab some black Get some darker bits in there. Like that, okay? And then we are going to let this dry before we start working on the water. Dry. Okay, now that it's dry, you can kind of see how um, the sky dried a bit. You get some of those like blooms and I really, really like the way that looks for this piece specifically. Okay, so now we're gonna do the water. And the water, like I said, in Georgian Bay, it's like this beautiful kind of like turquoise um, blue. It's gorgeous. So I'm just gonna take some Viridian Green and some turquoise. And I'm gonna do a light wash and it's more turquoise right up against the shore. Okay. Like if you haven't seen this, this place, it's stunning. It's right at the tip of um, Bruce Peninsula such a gorgeous area and I'm lucky enough to have a friend with a cottage around there had some really nice hikes okay so I'm just dropping that color there then I'm gonna move out towards um, further out away from the shoreline making it a bit more turquoise so grabbing my turquoise color more water blending it out And the further it's going to get towards that horizon line, the darker the water will be. Okay, 
So just working on my layer of turquoise and then I'm gonna add some darker blue. Okay, so I actually want more of that turquoise color right at the shore. Sorry, that green and then into the turquoise blue. Okay, and then I'm gonna grab some ultramarine, which is a warmer blue. And I'm just gonna put it here at the front where it would be darker. And then more at the horizon back here. Let's try and make that a little bit more straight. And then I'm gonna grab some indigo which is nice and dark. Put it down here at the front and then right against that horizon line, like that, okay? Just try not to think about it too much, just have fun with it, okay? And then there will be some water here Mm, you know what? No, I'm going to have the trees just coming right up from behind this light, lighthouse. And we are going to put more detail into the rocks, so they'll look a bit more rock-like. Okay? Because <laughs> it might not look as rock-like as we want it to right now. Okay. Um. Yes. I think that's good. doing some lines while it's still wet and then we're going to do some like wave lines after too okay so now actually we will work on those trees just the first layer of the trees while this area is still wet so what I'm actually going to do is I'm just going to take a bunch of sap green which is the lightest green and I'm just gonna lay it all over this area not in a tree formation or anything just get that color down that and then maybe I'll do some tips of trees over here just like that because we're going to do another layer well that will look with darker paint that will look more like trees obviously just putting that nice layer that would be peeking through the sun with some jagged tree tops like that okay and then we'll let that dry now this isn't the exact painting of the lighthouse. Um, the lighthouse is pretty close, oops. But, you know, I know there's some benches, there's a bit more trees and stuff like here. There's an island back there we might do, but it's not exact, so just keep that in mind if you know the area. Okay, now I am going to let this dry and then I'm gonna move on to the next part, which is gonna be the lighthouse. Okay, so now it's dry and we're gonna do the lighthouse. The lighthouse is actually white. So we're just going to be doing a really, really light wash of gray. So I'm going to take my Payne's gray here. I'm just going to make a little area on my palette. And the sun is coming from this way. So this part is going to be the lightest. Then it's going to be a little slightly darker here and then pretty dark here because of that shadow. It is facing away from the sun. So I'm just going to take my Payne's gray and just cover this area. Not the peak here of that part. I'm going to skip that because that's actually going to be touching or not touching the light, but the light will be hitting that part. Okay, and then I'm gonna grab a bit more and then go darker inside those doors and windows. Like so. A bit darker up here too. Okay, and then I'm gonna wash more of that off and I'm just going to add a bit of darkness to this side because we don't want it to be completely white. It will look white in contrast to all the other colors on it. You will be able to see that it's a white lighthouse. 
But if you look up any shadows on anything, it always has a tint of some sort of color. So there, that's the next one. And then that's, oh, wait, let's do it light or dark. Okay. And then just kind of water on this side almost with the tiniest tinge of gray. I'm actually going to take up some of that darkness. There. Okay. Like so. And then the inside of this window is still gray. Like that. And then this landing part is gonna be kind of shadowed like so, okay? A little bit of a shadow up here too. Okay. Um, now, before we move on to a little bit more detail on that, I just want to make sure it's dry. Um, actually, I'm going to do the red peaks of those windows and doors. So the front here is red. And around that door. Just make sure that your painting is not completely, or it's completely dry when you do this little detail part, because if certain areas are still wet, it might run into each other and then you'll run into a problem. So I can kind of judge that the part I'm working on is pretty dry. Actually, because that is on this side, it needs to be a bit darker because it's a shadow of the red. This red's gonna be darker. Like that. And then this red's gonna be brighter. Oh, too much water. Yeah, sorry, I can kind of judge what is dried and what's not. So just look at your paper and make sure it's dry before you work on little details like this or else they were, the colors will bleed into each other and it might mess up your work. Not completely, you can always lift it up. Okay, and then I'm gonna do the red top here. It's kind of like a slight red. It's not as vibrant just because I think it's a little bit <laughs> Faded by the sun, maybe, on this lighthouse. And then the ropes here were kind of red. Like so. Okay. Like that. Okay, now the base is dry of that lighthouse. I'm just going to take the slightest amount of gray. And they kind of have these, like, the lighthouse is made of wood panels, I think. So I'm just going to draw some rough lines just for a bit of texture take some of that off make it the lightest it can be like you barely want to see the lines but you just want a bit of texture so it doesn't look so flat oops and i messed it up there we go took up some of that red with it because that was still wet side. Make sure you go with the the angle of the the panel on the lighthouse. Okay, and then I'm going to go just over these creases of where each of the panels meet. Just darken that a bit. Okay. Like so. And there you go. Okay. I might darken these peaks just a little. So there's a bit of a shadow. Like that. Okay. So the lighthouse is basically done. Um, I might do a little bit of white on the windows in a bit. But now I'm going to move on to the trees. Okay. So I, first green I used was a sap green. Now I'm going to use a hooker's green dark. And I'm just going to start creating rough trees. Like really don't even think too much about it, okay? So start with going with like a line down and then just kind of take your brush and just dab it around <laughs> in horizontal lines. And we're gonna go over it with darker green after this too so it doesn't have to be perfect. We're just getting kind of 
that tree shape down. Just with the tip of your brush, getting some darker green in there. You want to focus on those treetops because those are the parts you'll see. Doesn't even have to be a full line. I'm just going horizontally, very, very rough with the tip of your brush, okay? Like so, and you can still see those little peaks of the sap green through. Okay, and then we will come back and do a darker part. Um, I'm gonna work on some more of the rocks. So I'm just gonna take my burnt umber and my black, mix them, and I'm just gonna, again, just gonna throw some color in there. So we're doing wet on dry, so I'm gonna make some darkness over here where the rocks kind of cave in, and down where it meets the water a bit. Maybe at the base of these trees, there's a bit more shadow, it gets darker. I'm just adding texture by just throwing that color on there. Just make your arm really, really loose and just don't even think about it at the base over here. like so. All right, so there's our rocks and I'm actually going to do the island back here. Oops. So I'm just gonna take some green and you can barely see what's on the island. I'm just gonna do like this. Maybe add a bit of green or a bit of brown, sorry, to that green. Just create texture on top. black too just because it's pretty far in the distance and it's really dark a little forest on that island like that okay all right then we are going to work on a bit more detail in the water just a bit and then the trees and then we are done okay so for the water all we're going to do to create these like little ripples in the water is you're just going to go across all the way, just kind of gently touching like that. So you're just gonna move your arm across in this motion and then ever so often just tapping the paper and making little lines, okay? Now as the lines come further down, they're, sorry, further spaced apart, and as they are further in the background, they're closer together, so, and they're smaller. I might do indigo lines, make it a bit darker. And this is not meant to be realistic. It's just to add a bit of texture to that water. It's a bit darker as it is further away, right? And a bit up, or and the part that's in the foreground, it's darker, and further apart, bigger. Okay. So, and then I'm just gonna make it really light here. Okay, and there you go. And that's how we're gonna do the water. And then last but not least, let's just put a bit more into those trees. So I had some of that brown and green mixture here. You could use that, you could use dioxazine purple if you want to make it darker. And again, just doing those vertical lines and then the horizontal lines, not lines, but line like a, a 
remember just with the tip of your brush, very loose. I'm gonna grab some purple here to make a nice dark, dark. green. And I really want it darker underneath here. Okay, and there you go. There is your Tobermory beautiful lighthouse rocky beach scene. Oh, I forgot the most satisfying part. Let's take up this tape. And you don't have to do it with tape if you don't want to. Um, it was just to tape it down so it didn't warp while I was filming. But there you go. Thank you all so much for watching my video. I really hope you liked it and I hope you learned something. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and follow me on Instagram and Facebook for even more. Have a great day, guys. Bye.